So it says infantile love for mm. Batman and other superheroes can be a precursor to fascism, says comic book legend Alan Moore. Um, th first thoughts. First, actually, what we should do first is define fascism because this is another one of like communism, like socialism has been part of the cultural zeitgeist now. And it's like uh, yeah. some people will define it as whatever they He, he kind of just be. threw that out there yes. and didn't explain why. So the dictionary definition says an authoritarian and nationalistic right wing system of government and social organization. Um, the funny thing is there's a lot of different properties that have covered this fairly well. Um, like in the like Marvel did their ci their Civil War storyline and in the movies they they covered that fairly well between Tony Stark and Captain America with Tony Stark being more than more or less okay with the idea of government intervention uh, like reigning in superheroes and preventing them from being able to do thank you uh, be able to do all that they want to do uh, whereas uh, Captain America basically says like if I see something going wrong I have to be able to to do something about it i can't s stand by and let a government tell me what i can and can't help with right yeah and batman versus superman has a similar idea when they talk about superman having basically unlimited power uh and like the the idea was always funny of like reining it in because it's it's kind of that's like you're basically relying on his good graces to ra rein it in because they can't actually do anything about it but so this is not an uncommon thing and the movie v for vendetta definitely gets in for a, you know based on the comic book by alan moore gets into the concept of fascist government systems in a mm -hmm. dystopian future I understand drawing political parallels with superhero movies Thank you. when uh, it's either commenting on their relationship between the superhero and government or law enforcement, or it's about the archetypes that the superheroes um, represent, that the audience is called to aspire to. Yeah. But I don't see how it connects to... Uh, fan base's enthusiasm for the franchise. Yeah. I think that this is uh, Alan Moore's disillusionment or fatigue with the whole industry that he's been in for decades. He's always been. I mean, he's, he's been disillusioned to, for decades. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to like express that and he's identifying the symptoms of a disease that's definitely present in entertainment and specifically the comic book industry but he's misdiagnosing the real yeah. like root issue so he says uh i said around about 2011 that i thought it had serious and worrying implications for the future if millions of adults were queuing up to see batman movies because that kind of infantilization that urge towards simpler times simpler realities that can often uh be a precursor to fascism the funniest part about this to me is that uh, if his idea is that in the p picture I posted of him today is him with a hammer and sickle t-shirt on from like back in the day. That's the, um, that's tends to be, um, he, he's saying fascism. If he was saying authoritarianism, which would be more all encompassing, right? But he's saying he's directing it one way, but it's uh, the left that tends to be the one that pushes towards folksy aphorisms and slogans that sound great, but don't have a whole lot of meat behind them, right? Mm -hmm. So I think he's misdiagnosing where he thinks that's coming from. Uh, like the people that would actually fall into that because it's it's the the it's the the dorky I mean his claim oh. seems to be specifically linked to when the Dark Knight Rises came out mm -hmm. and there was a huge debate over whether it was uh, a right wing themed movie or whether it was just yeah. a Batman movie I think that there is a weird relationship between creators and I'm not super familiar with this person uh, between wanting to champion certain causes and also not being able to accept when the public has a specific view of what's created right so batman is a right-wing movie now which i don't know that it necessarily is it's just been linked to that in popular political and social commentary lore well they, they talk a lot about how batman is a servant to the to the state for the police meaning that he beats up the 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 the, mm -hmm. the, the, the really low iq version is that he beats up like criminals who are just stealing bread uh, the the idea that he just mm -hmm. he beats up the and those are some but of my then favorite, when it comes to like yeah. actual corruption he doesn't yeah. pay attention to it so, so um, uh, but this isn't even about the characters it's about the psychology of the fans mm -hmm. which is rather presumptuous well um, I would I would say that the people he's talking about the the people lining up to see these movies I would I, I would think more along the lines of the Marvel NPCs. 
That, yeah, I'm that, thinking of like the the soy facing yeah. poggers, and I can't know where they're good, like how they vote, but I can infer. <laughs> I, sure. I can infer where their general belief systems fall. And it's totally fair to say that, like, these franchises, these characters, these movies actually mean too much to them compared yeah. to real life real, or compared to real relationships or real stories or... Or even politics. Like if they, politics if they put, even, yeah. If they paid as close attention to what was going on in the real world outside of their echo chamber they would be a whole lot better informed than being in an echo chamber and then using this type of material like graphic novels as a guideline for their morality. Yeah. And it, it's true that also the comic book industry and now like that they're being adapted into movies, it's undergone a weird evolution as its fan base has grown older where it's not being adopted by the next generation mm -hmm. of, of kids that were originally the fan base. And it's... The toys are now being called collectibles. The cartoons are now being called animations. Yeah, that did, was that. Did, the, was that a, did you read a comment? Yes. That, yeah, it was really, really smart. That they've basically they give everything like an adult name because it's like it's not a it's not a mm -hmm. toy. It's a collectible. It's not a. They don't want to be ageist. You yeah, know? they don't want to make yeah. grown men who watch the stuff feel bad about themselves. That and that's yeah, that's and true. it's all been converted into an adult friendly interest. But then the themes are just as juvenile. Yes. And the stories are just as simplistic. When you when you guys sent me this article today and I read the headline, uh, infantile love for Batman and other superheroes can be a pre precursor to fascism, I actually thought uh, before I read the article that he meant like because they believe someone else is going to come save them and take care of like yeah. the bad no, guys. No, but it wasn't that. That was like what he meant by that. And it's not like, which makes this even more sort of boring mm -hmm. to me. Sorry, Alan Moore. Uh, I, I think I'm not trying to bash anyone who really enjoys superhero movies. It's not necessarily my thing. But I do think that this idea that like someone is going to swoop in and save you from the evils of your city, whether it be because the government is corrupt or whatever, like that would lend itself to fascism to me because you're mm -hmm. always looking for someone else to solve your mm -hmm. problems. I don't necessarily think that's the message of superhero movies. But again... I feel like this guy has missed the mark on what he's interpreting. Yeah, funnily enough, I think you could make the same, not, it's not a judgment. You could make the same analysis going the other direction if we were to talk about cop and military shows, which absolutely produce a simplistic view of uh, what police officers do or a glorified view of what police officers do, what the military does to show them in a good light. And that would go, I think, the yeah, other and, way. And that's a proven phenomenon. Yeah, that, propaganda. That people who watch uh, Law & Order SVU, for example, yeah. they are proven to, to have skewed perceptions of the rate uh, victims that get justice and I say that as someone who loves all those are my favorite genres yeah. of shows but I, when I watch it like I'm like man it would be cool if it was actually this uh, simplistic but and not it, a yeah. lot of people are able to make that, that distinction. distinction well and you yeah. have to couple it with real life media so we don't have that for superheroes obviously but like if you watch a Law and Order SVU or a crime show there's um, a podcast that I used to listen to a lot called Small Town Dicks and it's like two police officers who interview anonymously people they've worked with and talk about cases that they've been through and the biggest contrast to the two TV and movies that they always say is like it takes an extremely long time mm -hmm. to get DNA to get justice like we'll be going to court over these things for, for years, years. Yeah. and that's not a reality in crime TV shows and so I think in some ways superhero movies are insulated from some of those realities because we know it's actually based in lore and it's based in fiction uh, I would point out that you know there are movies that sort of glorify the military or cops or whatever else, but they aren't enough to turn around recruitment rates. I mean, there are other yeah. factors playing into that, but we don't really see media as enough of an influence over people's behavior to make them want to become cops or police or military members at high rates in the same way that like superhero movies, I don't necessarily see people I don't know what the correlation would be. You know, you volunteer to be in your local fire department or whatever else. Like, I don't think anyone is pursuing uh, becoming more authoritarian because they watch a superhero movie. In fact, I feel like it teaches people to be submissive in some ways. And uh, I would argue that, like, it does speak to the infantilization 
uh, the lack of uh, of people growing up and actually be, like get, like we talk about not building fully formed lives in their in their staying mm-hmm. children for far longer than they used to, uh, and they kind of live and embody uh, and they want to embody these characters in their mind rather than kind of growing up and moving. I on. think it like makes people not need to uh, distill what values the movies that they yeah. loved growing up had and learning how to apply them into your adult life now. It, there's also this when they, they talk about the dominance of superhero movies it's not the reason for Trump but it's a symptom of the emotional infantilization society has gone through which resulted in the election of Trump you could say that of any political opponent who uh, tells people what they want to hear uh, in order to get votes right like uh, I don't see that as being unique to him if anything I would say that uh, the right tends to be more facts and data driven though there's still a whole lot of tribalism on both sides I would say that the infantilization is far more of an issue going the other direction. That's taking a huge liberty from what Alan Moore even said, yeah. though. Um, and, and he's referring more to the behavior of fandoms, which we've talked about before, um, and the overextended adolescence yeah. that's encouraged among the MCU stands and the Disney stands and the, that's what I'm thinking. the that's- Star Wars stands, the ones who just blindly have faith yep. in these franchises and look to entertainment products for the meaning in their lives. And I would, I would That's argue, the emotional infantilization yes. that we are noticing. And, and I would say that if you looked to, uh, if you took a survey of like people who were uh, large fans of those, gr- uh, of those franchises, you're going to see a lot of um, trust in, uh, in authority and a lot of trust in institutions that you just wouldn't see going the other direction. And it's trust in private institutions yeah. uh not in the government weirdly weirdly enough it seems to be it's definitely distinctly not um authoritarianism or like totalitarianism by force but it comes from the down going upwards yeah. like this is the distinction a lot of people make between uh 1984 and brave, brave new world, world. Yeah. 1984 is the totalitarianism by force by violence, um, by threats, and then Brave New World is enforced yeah. from the bottom upwards. I pointed that out. I was pointing that out to somebody when a lot of the stuff was going on with um, COVID and uh, people, and like I started noticing people were really getting upset that they couldn't go to Disney. <laughs> they couldn't yeah. go to Disney World, and I'm like, it's like yeah, they they had that uh, their minor reality like, break what about- from all the things that were there. We were uh, distracting them mm-hmm. with to keep them sustained and docile. What mm-hmm. about your ability to go to your family member's funeral? Yeah, like <laughs> I, I don't know, like that that allegiance to a private institution like Disney yeah. or like the DCEU or whatever it may be. Uh, it's worrisome. It's just not worrisome for the same reasons Alan Moore is identifying, I think. And I mean, like, I get the the idea that the, the I think what, like, if you're trying to infer that what he's saying is like you want somebody to come and solve your problems for you. But one of the, the core uh, things that becomes an issue with a lot of these characters is the idea that just because you have the ability to do that, does that mean, does that give you the right to do that, right? Like Tony Stark invented the Iron Man suit and then essentially just told the government they couldn't have it. Uh, and seems kept, reasonable to me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, and and so you get people on both sides of the equation. That was kind of one of the beautiful things about the movie Captain America: Civil War, is that they presented both of the main characters with a side of that coin, meaning that uh, Tony Stark, uh, after suffering loss, felt like it was okay to be reined in, and that you know maybe they they shouldn't have all the power in the world. But then uh, we ask, I don't agree with that. Then we ask, but giving that to power to a government means what? Right? Their mm-hmm. their version of the UN. Uh, and mm-hmm. Captain America holds a more classic view of like, look, if I see somebody in danger, uh, I want to. I'm going to help them no matter who tells me I can or I can't. But then the question is like, then the big uh, dilemma is always ends up being like, well, what if that person isn't a good person? Why is it always like we assume that that person with all those powers is going to end up mm-hmm. being a good guy when we know that that's not how the real world works? Yeah, the archetypes that yeah. different superheroes embody. Uh, they, they differ a lot, and I understand analyzing that as, uh, you know, how they propagandize people politically into, like, in the direction of certain extremist ideologies. Mm-hmm. But, again, like, that's not what Alan Moore was even saying. Mm-hmm. He was talking about 
how he finds the comic industry tiresome these days because of all the things attached to it, not the actual, not what's happening to the movies or or the comic books themselves, like not the stories, but the fans. He, he's basically saying that the fans are the problem. And he's not wrong. He He's partially right. He's, he's not wrong, but he's not right. Like, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of Alan Moore. I think he's kind of pretentious, I've always thought. Yeah. You know, I've I just get tired him, of these, like, armchair diagnosis of potential fascism. Him, like, I don't need it. Him, Ga- Neil Gaiman, I've kind of always, I've never been huge fans, but it is what it is. Uh, it is interesting, though, because they want to have these debates, but they very rarely, like I said, he posted a picture with him. Or, like, the picture I've used of him today is him wearing a hammer and sickle, and we all know that that's, uh, every bit is uh, control-oriented. And, and uh, it's just a different type of power, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I find it funny because Alan Moore to me has always been kind of insufferable, but he kind of always comes around every so often. And from what I understand, uh, I don't keep up with it that his new books don't sell all that well uh, comparatively to the stuff that he's done in the past. A lot of the, comment, the comments were um, just saying that he is a wannabe intellectual and... He's not as funny as he used to be, and he's just like grasping at straws. Yeah, um, and like I said, he he made v-, v for Vendetta the comic, and the movie V for Vendetta is actually quite, <laughs> um, quite good in the way that it describes uh, overt authoritarianism from from the government, right? And the uh, the meltdown of the system is that's the, a different time period. Yes, uh, well, that's that's pr- uh, given in a dystopian future, but it was made in two thousand six, uh, and that movie coming out now would never be made with the level of nuance that it yeah. uh, that it was made with back then. But I, I rewatched it recently, and the the guy who plays Chancellor Sutler, he's fr- he's freaking great, uh, getting to see all those characters. But I just don't think that they would be able to make that movie with the same level of nuance and characterization that they would be now. Um, and like I said, uh, this is slightly off topic, but the, the character of Evie would never be able to be as awesome as she was in that movie because she would be, uh, girl bossed up. Like she's already like extremely strong in that char- in that movie, but they would end up making her insufferable mm. if they made that movie now. Uh, so thank goodness that they're not continuing that. Thanks for watching this clip guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.